You know, some people say I'm crazy. I've been called crazy old man. I've been called the crazy dirty old man. I've been called the wise crazy old man. I've been called the crazy old white man. People keep saying I'm crazy. Well, to you people, thank you because you're right. And this is the Crazy Old Man Network. There's nothing defensive about denying Palestinians water. Yeah. Not long ago, over a thousand Palestinians died. About 16 Israelis died. Is that a conflict or a genocide? It's not anti Semitic, opposing government policies known to be pathetic. Come on. The government doesn't represent the people Many Israeli activists yell the government is evil Crusades with modern weapons, they keep making sequels It's apartheid, you find walls of separation They used to keep Arabs out of the Jewish nation But people on both sides oppose the situation You never know it from the mass media lies They spread it and censor it Seek media that's independent Cause the government uses the news to spread their views It's their spin and they profit off battles that they win What would you do if you were born in Palestine And had no way to leave and Saw bombs in the sky, would you fight back or sit and watch your family members die? die. Why is Israel unaccountable for crimes? Why? These censored animals are going on a daily show. They lie and hide those crimes we need to know. Our taxes fund $7 million given daily for building weapons used by the Israeli military. It's not about bow. the Bible or Quran when they bomb. It's about the sickness, the greed for the riches. The government doesn't represent the people and the interests, so the people got to react with actions to flip Come this. The witness, when to oppression with quickness. They do it for democracy? That's just a mockery. Like writing the Constitution, owning slaves on their property. They aim to Brainwash, 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 brainwash,
Well, hello there. This is Lee, the crazy old man, and this is my editorial for tonight. Hypocrisy. Israel, Iran, and the U.S. And actually, the, most of the European countries that follow Israel. Tell you what. Israel is complaining about Iran, and of course the U.S. is following in their footsteps. Having, trying to get the nuclear bomb. Now, if they wanted to get it, they would have had it a long time ago, but for the past 20 years, every five minutes, Israel is saying, Iran's getting a nuclear weapon in a, in a month. A year later, Iran's getting a nuclear weapon in a month. Bullshit. Iran doesn't want nuclear weapon. They aren't stupid. They know damn well, even if they did have a nuclear bomb, if they tried something with Israel, Israel would bomb the shit out of them because Israel has a whole bunch of nuclear bombs. Seems to me if Iran can't have a nuclear bomb, then Israel shouldn't be able to have nuclear bombs. Because Israel is a threat to Iran. Iran is not a threat to Israel. Israel is the fourth most powerful nation on the world in the world. They aren't threatened. They don't have any threats by anybody in the Middle East because they all know damn well that they would lose. They lost before, and they would lose again. Then they say that, well, the problem with giving Palestine and its own state is that it's a threat to Israel. We want to make sure Palestine is not going to be a threat to Israel. No way in hell is Palestine going to be a threat to Israel. I mean, and... Apartheid in Palestine is horrible, and in Israel. And the Christians are sitting there saying, and that Israel is right. But the thing they don't realize is, Israel is a Jewish state. I have nothing against the Jews. I do have something against the Zionists who run Israel. And they treat everybody like shit that's not Jewish. They give the Christians a hassle. They give the Arabs a hassle. They stole all the Bedouins. They made the Bedouins go into the cities. And it's ridiculous. Everybody's discriminated against except the Jewish people. And the thing that really burns me up is that Israel stole the land from Palestine. It was originally Palestine there. There were, there were some Jews living there, a small part of the population. And the Jews and the Arabs got along great until the Zionists came. Palestine was a colony of England. And World War II broke out and Jews were coming into Palestine. They were going all over the world. A bunch of them came to Palestine. And again, they were accepted with no problem by the Palestinians. I know people that were around then, and they were telling me that there was no problem back then. Of course, you hear the media say, well, this is something that's been going on for thousands of years. Bullshit. It hasn't. I believe the people over there more than I believe the media. So, in order to 
thank the Palestinians, the Zionists had a civil war. And they kicked the British out. And then the British split up Israel. Or split up Palestine and the Israel and Palestine. Now, the Jewish population was about 20%, I believe, at the time. But they got 80% of the land. So then England goes to the UN and says, this is what should be Israel. The UN says, sure. We love the Israelis and we don't like the Palestinians, so we're going to go along with you. So, in effect, the Zionists stole the land. One thing that people don't realize is that the Zionists and Hitler were buddies. And Hitler said, well, I'm going to have to discriminate against the Jews. I'm going to have to convince my people that the Jews are the cause of all their problems. And Zionists said, sure, fine. We'll get our buddies out of here and you can take care of the rest. And so now the Zionists are acting like Hitler. Not as bad. They, they aren't getting rid of six million Jews like Hitler did. But they're getting rid of a bunch of Palestinians. A lot of the Palestinians went to Lebanon and the Israelis bombed the, uh, the, where the Palestinians were in Lebanon. Killed a whole bunch of them. Then they sit there and say that Hezbollah is a terrorist group. It's not a terrorist group. They're fighting for the freedom of their people. Israel is a terrorist. To me, what the United States should do is say, look, you ain't getting no more money from us unless you give back the Palestinians' land back to them. The 67 borders. Get all those damn settlements out of there. When it comes to Jerusalem, Jerusalem will not be a part of Israel. It will be a city-state like the Vatican. And it will be run by the Jews, the Arabs, or the the Muslims and Christians. <clears throat> Stop discriminating against the non-Jews in Israel. If they want, they can go to Palestine. And then you got the West Bank and Gaza, and they're split up. So you got to have a highway going between the two. And that's the way it's going to be. If you don't do it, no more money. Now, to me, that's the way to handle it. But the U.S. is, is the Zionist bitch, Israel's bitch. That reminds me, i got to put that up on this show page. Anyway, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to play The Children of the Dust. It's from John Pilger. Children of the Dust. Link, John Pilger. Published 28th of May 2007. As the Israeli army attempts to imprison an entire nation, it is the youngest who suffer most. Half of all Palestinians killed in the past six years are children. Israel is destroying any notion of a state of Palestine and is being allowed to imprison an entire nation. 
That is clear from the latest attacks on Gaza, whose suffering has become a metaphor for the tragedy imposed on the peoples of the Middle East and beyond. These attacks, reported on Channel 4 News, were targeting key militants of Hamas and the Hamas infrastructure. The BBC described a clash between the same militants and Israeli F-16 aircraft. Consider one such clash. The militant's car was blown to pieces by a missile from a fighter bomber. Who were these militants? In my experience, all the people of Gaza are militant in their resistance to their jailer and tormentor. As for the Hamas infrastructure, this was the headquarters of the party that won last year's democratic elections in Palestine. To report that would give the wrong impression. It would suggest that the people in the car and all the others over the years, the babies and the elderly who have also clashed with fighter bombers, were victims of a monstrous injustice. It would suggest the truth. Some say, said the Channel 4 reporter, that Hamas has courted this attack. Perhaps he was referring to the rockets fired at Israel from within the prison of Gaza which killed no one. Under international law an occupied people has the right to use arms against the occupier's forces. This right is never reported. The Channel 4 reporter referred to an endless war, suggesting equivalence. There is no war. There is resistance among the poorest, most vulnerable people on earth to an enduring, illegal occupation imposed by the world's fourth largest military power, whose weapons of mass destruction range from cluster bombs to thermonuclear devices, bankrolled by the superpower. In the past six years alone, wrote the historian Ellen Papp, Israeli forces have killed more than 4,000 Palestinians, half of them children. Consider how this power works. According to documents obtained by United Press International, the Israelis once secretly funded Hamas as a direct attempt to divide and dilute support for a strong, secular PLO Palestine liberation organization by using a competing religious alternative, in the words of a former CIA official. Today, Israel and the U.S. have reversed this ploy and openly back Hamas's rival, Fatah, with bribes of millions of dollars. Israel recently secretly allowed 500 Fatah fighters to cross into Gaza from Egypt, where they had been trained by another American client, the Cairo dictatorship. The Israelis aim is to undermine the elected Palestinian government and ignite a civil war. They have not quite succeeded. In response, the Palestinians forged a government of national unity, of both Hamas and Fatah. The latest attacks are aimed at destroying this. With Gaza secured in chaos and the West Bank walled in, the Israeli plan, wrote the Palestinian academic Karma Nabolsi, is, a Hobbitian vision of an anarchic society, truncated, violent, powerless, destroyed, cowed, ruled by disparate militias, gangs, religious ideologues and extremists, broken up into ethnic and religious tribalism and co-opted collaborationists. Look to the Iraq of today. On 19th of May, The Guardian received this letter from Omar Jabri al sarafah a Ramallah resident, land, water and air are under constant sight of a sophisticated military surveillance system that makes Gaza like the Truman Show, he wrote. In this film every Gazan actor has a predefined role and the Israeli army behaves as a director. The Gaza Strip needs to be shown as what it is an Israeli laboratory backed by the international community where human beings are used as rabbits to test the most dramatic and perverse practices of economic suffocation and starvation. The remarkable Israeli journalist Gideon Levy has described the starvation sweeping Gaza's more than a million and a quarter inhabitants and the thousands of wounded, disabled and shell-shocked people unable to receive any treatment. The shadows of human beings roam the ruins. They only know the Israeli army will return and they know what this will mean for them, more imprisonment in their homes for weeks, more death and destruction in monstrous proportions. Whenever I have been in Gaza, I have been consumed by this melancholia, as if I were a trespasser in a secret place of mourning. Skeins of smoke from wood fires hang over the same Mediterranean Sea that free peoples know, but not here. Along beaches that tourists would regard as picturesque trudge the incarcerated of Gaza, lines of sepia figures become silhouettes, marching at the water's edge, through lapping sewage. The water and power are cut off, yet again, when the generators are bombed, yet again. Iconic murals on walls pockmarked by bullets commemorate the dead, such as the family of 18 men, women and children who, clashed, with a 500-pound American-Israeli bomb, dropped on their block of flats as they slept. Presumably, they were militants. More than 40% of the population of Gaza are children under the age of 15. 
reporting on a four-year field study in occupied Palestine for the British Medical Journal, Dr. Derek Summerfield wrote that, two-thirds of the 621 children killed at checkpoints, in the street, on the way to school, in their homes, died from small arms fire, directed in over half of cases to the head, neck and chest, the sniper's wound. A friend of mine with the United Nations calls them, children of the dust. Their wonderful childishness, their oudiness and giggles and charm, belie their nightmare. I met Dr. Khalid Dolan, a psychiatrist who heads one of several children's community health projects in Gaza. He told me about his latest survey. The statistic I personally find unbearable, he said, is that 99.4% of the children we studied suffer trauma. Once you look at the rates of exposure to trauma, you see why. 99.2% of the study group's homes were bombarded, 97.5% were exposed to tear gas, 96.6% witnessed shootings, 95.8% witnessed bombardment and funerals, almost a quarter saw family members injured or killed. He said children as young as three faced the dichotomy caused by having to cope with these conditions. They dreamt about becoming doctors and nurses, then this was overtaken by an apocalyptic vision of themselves as the next generation of suicide bombers. They experienced this invariably after an attack by the Israelis. For some boys, their heroes were no longer football players, but a confusion of Palestinian, martyrs, and even the enemy, because Israeli soldiers are the strongest and have Apache gunships. Shortly before he died, Edward said bitterly reproached foreign journalists for what he called their destructive role in, stripping the context of Palestinian violence, the response of a desperate and horribly oppressed people, and the terrible suffering from which it arises. Just as the invasion of Iraq was a war by media, so the same can be said of the grotesquely one-sided conflict in Palestine. As the pioneering work of the Glasgow University Media Group shows, television viewers are rarely told that the Palestinians are victims of an illegal military occupation, the term, occupied territories, is seldom explained. Only 9% of young people interviewed in the UK know that the Israelis are the occupying force and the illegal settlers are Jewish, many believe them to be Palestinian. The selective use of language by broadcasters is crucial in maintaining this confusion and ignorance. Words such as, terrorism, murder, and, savage, cold-blooded killing, describe the deaths of Israelis, almost never Palestinians. There are honorable exceptions. The kidnapped to BBC reporter Alan Johnston is one of them. Yet, amidst the avalanche of coverage of his abduction, no mention is made of the thousands of Palestinians abducted by Israel, many of whom will not see their families for years. There are no appeals for them. In Jerusalem, the Foreign Press Association documents the shooting and intimidation of its members by Israeli soldiers. In one eight-month period, as many journalists, including the CNN bureau chief in Jerusalem, were wounded by the Israelis, some of them seriously. In each case, the FPA complained. In each case, there was no satisfactory reply. A censorship by omission runs deep in Western journalism on Israel, especially in the U.S. Her mass is dismissed as a terrorist group sworn to Israel's destruction, and one that refuses to recognize Israel and wants to fight not talk. This theme suppresses the truth. Well, uh, Obama. I voted for him the first time. Second time I'm thinking, if I vote for Obama, He'll, he'll keep killing people with the drones. CIA is going to be going into countries and sticking their nose in their affairs. People we don't like are going to get thrown out by the CIA. And they're going to take, well, let's go back. Since World War II, 72 elected governments were overthrown by the CIA and replaced by dictatorships. And it's sad, real sad. 
That's why the United States is hated throughout the world. And so we have a problem. But the United States is the most powerful country in the world. But it's losing support because it's also the biggest terrorist in the world. Number two is Israel. The war on terror is making it more dangerous for the people of this country because the terrorists are getting more people because of what our country is doing to them. Also because of our support for Israel. Like I say, Israel doesn't have a thing to be afraid of. Even if we stop giving them aid, they still have a very strong military and they're building their most of their own military stuff. They may even just tell us to go fuck ourselves. And then they've got this powerful lobby. They've got uh, Democrats and Republicans supporting their atrocities and their war crimes and their crimes against humanity. The United States got out of certain things in, in the UN because the UN rightly allowed Palestinians in. Every time something is done to try and get Israel to quit being assholes by the UN, the United States vetoes it. There are many votes that would affect Israel where only two countries say no. That's Israel and the United States. Even the European countries are getting fed up with Israel. Now when it comes to Iran, the reason that the enrichment in Iran was cut to three and a half percent is because three and a half percent is used for medical purposes. It doesn't, there's no way they can make a bomb with it. They need over 20 percent. And the reason that the uh, agreement cut it down to the three and a half percent was that France uses 19 percent enrichment to for medical things and they make a lot of money with it. so they don't want uh, Iran to be making money they figure they'll lose some to Iran Let's look at Syria. The rebels in Syria have been going after the Christians and the Syrian government has been uh, getting in the way. The rebels attacked the Christian area and the Syrian military went and kicked the rebels out. The rebels are mostly Al-Qaeda. But the United States still supports Al-Qaeda. Saudi Arabia, they had something to do with 9-11, that's positive. I'm sure of that. I feel 9-11 was a combination of Saudi Arabia, Israel, Al-Qaeda, and Dick Cheney. I would say George Bush, but George Bush was a puppet of Cheney's. 
there's a lot. If you go look at all these conspiracy theories, you find out that some of them are right. You look at the report by our government, and you find out that it's full of shit. So to me, our government is guilty. And it's been done in the past with most wars. So something has to be done to stop it. Now, most of my friends are black. A lot of them tell me I'm as black as they are. And I like that. A little over 30 years ago, I went from the whoop de doo suburbs of Detroit to the inner city. The best thing I ever did. I lost every white friend I had, but I gained a whole lot of good black friends. People that had my back. Anyway, probably 90% of the black friends, probably 100% who voted, voted for Obama. I voted for Obama. A lot of them still support Obama, even though he hadn't done a damn thing for the blacks. Since Obama got in, things are getting worse for the blacks. Apartheid is coming back. Look at South Africa. Apartheid's still there. The blacks are controlling the government, but the whites are controlling the economy. The whites are still keeping the blacks down. Now that may change. But I have a feeling that there's going to be some fighting over there. Because there are a lot of white folks that are going to fight to keep control. You see, the problem is that white folks went in and took over countries where blacks and, and the U.S. where Native Americans were and made them third class citizens, not second class. Killed a whole bunch of them off. Back in slavery times, they, they took the slaves. There was genocide in the United States against the Indians. They went from over 12 million to 250,000. And they're still having their land stolen by the oil companies and other companies. Energy companies are ruining our earth. Obama's not doing a damn thing about it. And now he's talking about this TTP, TPP thing, which will ruin everything for everybody but the rich folks. I talked about that earlier, I believe. I'll probably talk about it again. But anyway, things are getting worse instead of better. We are losing our country. We are losing our world to the rich folks. I'm old and I'm poor. I feel when it comes to money, I'm poor. When it comes to friends, I'm rich. 
But the Republicans get in, I'm going to be in deep shit. They're going to mess with my Medicare, which will mean that I'll probably die within a year. And then they're going to, they're talking about getting rid of unemployment. People work for that unemployment. They don't pay in the unemployment, their bosses do. But, and then they're going to get rid of the minimum wage, which means a lot of people are going to make less. But they sit here and say, well, these minimum wage jobs are temporary. They're just until you get something better. Well, there ain't nothing better out there. It used to be McDonald's was full of kids working there. That's not it anymore. People with families got to get a job, and they take a job with minimum wage because they don't have any choice. And then they, they get food stamps and Medicaid. Oh, wait a minute now. A lot of these, these Republican states aren't giving them the Medicaid even though it doesn't cost them a penny. And the reason these people are down and unemployed is because the jobs were taken out of the United States and to other countries by these big corporations. I want to do a thing on Detroit. And I already said something about Detroit before. But I'm going to do more on it because Detroit is one of the cities that's actually every black city in Michigan has been taken over by the state. The state took money away from them and forced them into bankruptcy. I was I heard a guy today who said he went to Detroit and he was surprised how good Detroit looked. I live, I live downtown. It's clean. You go out to uh, neighborhoods, and they aren't so clean. But they got people going around sweeping the city. And you can walk down the street and not see any litter. They got garbage cans about every 20 feet. But now I'm getting off the subject. So I guess I better get back on the subject. We need to get our government back. We need to get rid of the Republicans and Democrats. Because both parties are screwing us. And we need to get rid of the hypocrites. When it comes to election time, do not vote for the money. Vote for the individual. Do not vote for the party. Vote for the individual. Bernie Sanders is going to run. If he runs, I hope he wins. Because he can make a change. Because he's fed up with the bullshit. And if he doesn't get the Democratic nomination, then he should run as an independent. And I do believe he would win. And then you got a lot of people out there that would really make good presidents. They aren't Democrats, they aren't Republicans. That's one thing that makes them good. Bernie Sanders is, he may be a Democrat, but he's not really. 
he's more of an independent. Anyway, I'm going to play a song called Bombs Falling and Nowhere to Go. A lot of children have this happening to them. And with the drones, a lot of kids are getting killed. A lot of innocent people are getting killed. And they need to stop the drones. The UN tells them, don't do the drones. The UN says that the U.S. is committed, committed war crimes, crimes against humanity. And yet the U.S. doesn't give a shit. Now, if anybody else does it, they get real upset. I mean, the U.S. has done worse things than were done in Syria. Now, Iran, the United States overthrew a legitimate government in Iran. That's why a Ayatollah Khomeini took over. And the hostage crisis, it was going to be taken care of. Jimmy Carter just about had it settled, but then and good old Reagan goes in there and says, hey, we're going to buy some arms from you, and you just don't let the hostages go until I'm elected. As soon as the inauguration started, the hostages were freed. Vietnam. One of the reasons Kennedy was killed was because he was going to get out of Vietnam. Johnson, who is a murderer, was a murderer, had Kennedy killed because Kennedy was going to get him off the ticket when it came to re-election time. And many other reasons. Between Herbert, between uh, uh, the FBI guy, the Hoover guy, and the CIA, and the Mafia, and Johnson, all conspired to get rid of Jack Ruby, who shot Oswald, was Mafia. The real killer was Mafia. And then, but then Johnson just about had Vietnam settled, though. He didn't run for re-election. And they were getting ready to sign a treaty. And Nixon sends Kissinger over there, and Kissinger convinced him not to sign. We'll take care of you, even though they abandoned him. Well, the reason Vietnam ended is because the troops decided not to fight anymore. They said, sir, no, sir. And they tried to bring in other troops and they wouldn't fight. But anyway, Truman, his war crime was Nagasaki and, uh, oh, what's the other city? Hiroshima. Japan said they wanted to surrender, but Truman said, not yet. I, I got to bomb Nagasaki and Hiroshima. I want to see what nuclear weapons do to the people of a city. And now, and they use nuclear weapons, not the bombs, but nuclear bullets. And Iraq, they used them, and now there's an epidemic of of uh, uh, deformed babies. Our troops, there's an epidemic of deformed babies is from our troops. In Europe, they were used, 
and uh, uh, and there's deformities there. More of our troops were killed by the uh, military than were killed by the enemy. Many of them died after the war. We got to get our government back. And the same thing with other countries throughout the world. Anyway, I'm going to play the bombs falling, nowhere to go. That's all for this show. Watch you all have a good day, good week, good month, and a good year. Most of all, I want you to have a beautiful life. Thank you for being you. TGY, thank God you're alive. <laughs>